We're going to switch gears on the topic today with one we haven't done in a little bit, and let's get your feedback down in the comments, shall we? We'll check in on the community, but we really want to hear from you. The topic is, am I the a-hole? First story starts with, am I the a-hole for not taking my ex in after she lost her job, apartment, and has no one to turn to? We have a kid together, which is the only reason I am asking for judgment. Me, 31 male, and my ex, 29 female, broke up six months ago after being together for nine years. To make a long story short, she cheated and I hate her guts. The fact she cheated also lost her pretty much all her friends as they were mostly mutual friends who chose my side for lack of a better way to phrase it. After I ended her with her, swallowed my pride and got along with her for the sake of her daughter. But let me be clear, that's also the only reason and any and all talking I do with her is always about our daughter. I also need to clarify that she has no family to turn to, and the guy she cheated with was a one-night stand, so nothing there either. Which is undoubtedly why she came to me when she came to drop off our daughter, 50-50 custody. She also arrived with a couple of suitcases in tow. When I asked her if she was moving, she immediately started telling me what had happened. She got fired last week. Her lease had run out and would not be renewed. Apparently, the owner's son was going to live there and she only has savings to last for a few weeks if she gets a cheap hotel and with the economy right now she can forget about a job in her field anytime soon and the rent prices are high as hell here and that's all on the off chance you can even find a place to begin with after an awkward pause where she was probably expecting me to invite her to stay with me which i obviously didn't she asked me if she could stay with me now i got the room three bedroom apartment so i got a spare room i make plenty to feed another mouth Issue is, I hate her. Like, legitimately despise her. Like I said, the only reason I tolerate her in my life is our daughter. If she wasn't in the picture, I would have laughed in her face and slammed the door right away. I said no, obviously, to which she started saying she figured we were friends now and she has nowhere to go. I told her that we are not friends and that the only reason I speak to her at all is our daughter. She should not mistake me being civil with friendship. She started crying and pretty much begging. I lost my crap, told her the fact that she had the guts to ask to live with me after everything she did is literally testament to the piece of crap she is and told her she'd better get a job and a place since I am not leaving our daughter with her in a crappy hotel room and close the door. Now here's the thing. At the end of the day, she is the mother of my daughter, so I feel responsible and sort of guilty despite the fact that I hate her. So I wanted the judgment of strangers on the internet. Well, here I am. So go ahead and leave your thoughts and opinions below. But obviously I'm going to read the community's thoughts and see what they have to say. MM172 votes, not the a-hole. I don't actually blame her for asking if she was truly desperate, but expecting you to say yes to the point of bringing along suitcases? She should have known better. Usurpter's War, which I'm pretty sure is the OP, says, Honestly, I can't fathom how she figured I'd say yes. Bean1213 said, Probably hoping to get you to agree out of awkwardness or something of the like. Weekly Conversation 8 says, It's also rare when a lease ends in the first nine days of the month and in the middle of the rental period. Did she not sign a year lease? Why doesn't she stay at her place until she has to move? She should be getting her security deposit back. Another thought coming from Ted IVM. It's not uncommon for leases to that start with a long term to turn into month-to-month -month leases automatically unless explicitly renewed. And it's also not uncommon for places to allow eviction, if the owner is moving in. There's lots of weird laws that screw renters over. Security deposits also aren't all that much money. I live in an expensive to rent place, but my security deposit is only 25% of one month's rent. Privacy is shard boats, not the a-hole. She made her bed. It is rough that the daughter has to realize her mom is not stable, but it's the truth. And the toxic environment that would result in someone you hate living under your roof would be unhealthy for her. Usurpter's War, the OP, said, and given my ex spends all her free time at home, that means I'd never be rid of her, even for a moment until she gets a job either. Moki Pants said, You just know she'd milk that for everything she could, too. A few days turns into a few weeks, then a few months, then it's, How dare you try to kick me out? We could be a family again. How could you break the family up? How could you do this to your daughter? Etc. Etc. SG131 said, Yeah. Once she would come, she wouldn't leave unless forced, and I know in some places kicking a person out can get difficult. The Beefcake O chimes in with, Oh yeah, she would milk it for 30 days and then claim squatter's rights, and try to use the kid as leverage, and, and, and. I'm sorry this happened, OP, 
but you made the right call, not the a-hole. Moving on to story number two. Am I the a-hole for telling my brother not to contact me again until he gets his life together? Even though I, 27 female, am 10 years younger than him, 37 male, I've always been my brother's keeper. Ever since I was a kid, I noticed my brother was not like other people when it came to his alcohol intake. For years, I watched as my brother essentially ruined his life over his addiction, as I and the rest of our family begged and pleaded for him to help. We have offered every bit of help, which has just met with anger, refusal, and being told to mind our own business. From being arrested for public intoxication, being put on a ventilator because of alcohol poisoning, or erratic behavior, my brother has done it all because of his addiction. My brother stated if I really cared for him, I would just be there for him whenever he needed me. As we are close, I promised I would always be there, but he really did need help. Back in October, my brother was diagnosed with liver failure from years of hard drinking. Thinking this would finally be the push he needed to get help, my brother told me that he was never going to stop. That this was the way he wanted to live his life, and no one can tell him otherwise. He lived as a drunk and wanted to die as a drunk. I cried and told him that unless he got help, I would not be helping him out anymore. Being worried about him has taken an emotional toll over the years, and I couldn't do it anymore, and hung up. The day after Christmas, I got a call from the county jail where he was at. Apparently, something happened that he wouldn't go into detail, but he was in jail and needed me to come and help him out. He lives around the San Jose area and I live around the Las Vegas area. I asked him what happened and he refused to tell me. I asked him if it was regarding his addiction and he refused to tell me again. I told him, unless he told me what was going on, I would not be going out there to help him. I have a chronic lung condition and cannot travel due to everything going on. He told me that he needed me but was adamant that this didn't change a thing. I told him I was sorry, but until he got his life together, I did not want him to contact me and hung up. After thinking about it and talking to my husband, I blocked his number along with all his social media. My family really came at me for doing that, stating I was a horrible person to do that to someone who was so in dire need of help, but I am fed up. I cannot help someone who doesn't want to help themselves, and after literal years, I am done. None of my other family members decided to step up and help him but have always expected me to drop everything to help him since I am the closest one to him. So, am I the a-hole for not helping him out? I don't know, I feel like this one might be an easy vote, but let's see what you guys think down in the comments for story number two, while I check out the community. Yay darkness, boats. Not the a-hole. Your family is hypocritical. They're just as capable of helping out your brother as you are. They're just all comfortable with the scenario where you're always digging him out of his own crap. Sucks to be him to realize his hole's gotten so deep the rope you offered him doesn't reach him anymore. And that's his own fault. Not helping someone who spits on your hand every time you offer it isn't the wrong thing to do. It's the healthier option for you. Anonymatron42 says, Absolutely. Opie's family wants her to keep herself perpetually lit on fire to keep her brother warm. No family member should be the sole witness of their loved one's self-destructing. Electric Trance Dude said, not even warm. The guy's definitely dying sooner than later. Booze is no joke. He'll be dead within one to two years. 100% for sure if he's already got liver failure going on now. Shaw's Slate comes to the conversation with, The problem here is that to help someone, they actually need to both want to help and be able to put themselves in a position where helping them will actually help them. If he stays in jail, he's going to have much more difficult time drinking. Bail him out and he will be back to it within hours. It's a shame the family wants him to hurt himself so badly. OP, you are not the a-hole. It's not just you who you have been on fire. He's lighting himself on fire too. El Hugo wants to add, Exactly this. OP, you're not the a-hole. If they care so much, why aren't they the ones bailing him out and paying for his mistakes? Pretty easy to stand there and criticize somebody else for not doing something you yourself would never do. They want him to have help? They help him. They don't lean on you to give in and compromise your very reasonable boundaries you've clearly worked hard to establish. Alright, now on to the third story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to let my sister-in-law move into my home temporarily? My husband is deployed and has been for almost 11 months. We have a 3-year-old daughter and a 14-month-old son. My sister-in-law, 43, has an 11-year-old daughter who she allows to run amok. Last month, she asked her best friend to move in with her to help pay bills, and this sparked an affair between her husband and said friend. I feel bad for her, I truly do. 
but there are many reasons why I don't want her to move in. The biggest one? She now calls me to tell me all the time that men are pigs and that my husband is probably cheating on me. Mind you, this is her brother. She doesn't have a job and refuses to get one. She has not worked in 16 years. Her daughter literally has no discipline and every time they have visited, she has left my home in complete shambles with my kids' toys broken and destroyed. Her daughter also lies like a rug and she laughs it off and says that it isn't a big deal. Example, her daughter drew all over my spreadsheet for work that was completely finished and due the very next morning. I didn't have time to make another one and had to spend several hours trying to use whiteout. She even wrote her name on it. The kid outright denied it and tried blaming my oldest, who only scribbles. Her mom said, she said she didn't do it and I'm not going to break her spirit simply because she drew on something. Put your stuff up for safekeeping next time you invite us for a visit. I did not invite her. She showed up unannounced. She always says things like, What are you going to get your favorite sister-in-law for her birthday? Or, Since you love me so much, you should buy me this. Anyways, I just can't do it. So she asked last week, or rather told me, Well, it's final. Greg and I are over. Teresa and I are going to come crash at your place. Literally like an outright demand as if I owe her. So I said, no you're not. She freaked out and asked me why and I was completely honest with her, down to every last detail. I simply don't have enough patience and I don't want her in my house while I am not there to make sure her daughter doesn't destroy my house. My husband called and I told him what happened. He said, you told her no, right? So he's 100% behind me on this one. But my brother-in-law is saying that I'm a stupid B-word for not being more understanding because her husband cheated and staying in the house with him and his mistress is going to cause a mental plummet. Am I the a-hole? She can't afford to go anywhere else and no one has room to house her. Yikes. I wouldn't put myself in that situation. I'd stand firm just like you did. But let's see what the community says. $5 foot job says, not the a-hole. If her cheating husband wants his wife out of the house, then he can pay for it. Why are they involving you into their mess? To Sue BCO, the OP says, She always tries involving me in her mess. She's been like this for as long as I have known her, 12 years. $5 foot job comes back with, This is hers and her husband's mess. You owe her nothing and even though you didn't have to, you gave her an explanation and she's further proving that living with her would be a nightmare. And if she's not working, that her and her child would be dependent on you, bossing you around non-stop. Science Girl 117 said, and they'd never pay your leave. They will become squatters, not the a-hole. Just bored 123234 votes, not the a-hole, but I'm confused why the woman her husband cheated on her with would be allowed to stay in the house. She and the kid would get the house. He would have to go find another living arrangement. If she leaves, it's very unlikely she would get it in the divorce. I'd recommend she stayed and kicked him out. The OP comes back with, I recommended the same thing, but apparently, her husband refuses to leave and the mistress has taken over the bedroom. He says that since he has been supporting her for 16 years and she hasn't paid for literally anything, then he is not obligated to leave because it's his house. Her name isn't on it and he made her sign a prenup upon marriage, so essentially, she will get nothing in the divorce. Just board 123234 comes back with, her name not being on it means nothing, if you're in the USA. If she got custody of the kid, she would most likely get the house. However, the prenup does mess that up if the house is in the prenup, she has no choice. I don't know, seems like she's in a terrible situation, but if you don't take her in, it'll be a serious motivator for divorce, which would give her alimony and child support, which should be more than enough to cover rent and necessities. If you take her in, just know she will never plan on leaving. Tail Fur says, mm. Considering she hasn't worked since before she even got pregnant, she may not get full custody. In order to have any custody, there has to be proof of income and stability. Edit. I forgot about alimony because of how stupid it is. $5 foot job chimed in again with, I don't think that's true. Housewife caregiver is a non-paying but essential role. That was her job for the past 16 years and with alimony and child support, you would have to pay her and buy her a house. So she would continue the same level of living. I don't know how it works with the prenup though but the whole idea of alimony payments was for housewives. Kitten Dealin' Mama wanted to add, Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. My sister's husband admitted to an affair and kicked her out on their 15th wedding anniversary. She hadn't worked in several years to raise their son and could not afford the mortgage payment or insurance and taxes. 
so she had to leave their home to live in a small apartment with her son that she had to pay for. While he moved in his affair partner into their home, she did get a small amount for alimony, but she didn't have a prenup. OP's sister-in-law did have a prenup, so she may not get anything at all. Ooh boy, I almost forgot how fun these were to read. Let's check out the last one. Am I the a-hole for living with my grandma at 31 and telling people to shut the F up when they tell me to get a real job? I always considered my grandparents my parents. My grandpa passed in January. I had been working at the same store since a teenager. I made a pretty decent wage since I had 14 years of raises, but I hated it. It was really taking a toll on my mental health, and after my grandpa passed, it just made everything worse. My grandma was also not doing well. She has always had an extreme fear of being alone and was grieving her husband she had spent 64 years with. I was spending as much time with her as possible and trying to cheer her up. Then when COVID hit, I started to worry about catching and giving it to her. We decided I would quit and I would move in with her. Then she wouldn't have to be alone and I wouldn't have to have a job I hate. This has worked out well for us. Both of our mental health has improved. This was also given me the time and energy to start taking college classes online. Ever since my mom found out I quit and moved in with my grandma, she has been spamming me calling me a loser and a deadbeat. I blocked her, so she calls my grandma and makes her cry. She tells her she's holding me back by letting me live with her, that I'm an embarrassment to the family. She also told her I'm being guilt tripped into it. Not true. My grandma blocked her. Now she recruits neighbors to pry. Because my grandma won't kick me out, my mom and stepdad wrote us out of their wills. Now if something happens to them, Neither of us get my siblings. Because according to my mom and stepdad, they will grow up to be a loser like me. This has completely devastated my grandma as she worries what will happen to them. She also now fears that they are right and that she is holding me back from having a better life and that I don't actually want to be here. Now my grandma says everyone will benefit if she's gone. I could have the house to myself or rent it out or sell it. Then not have to worry about money go to a good university instead of a community college. She thinks if I go to a better school, I will get a better job and this will impress my mom and stepdad and they will let me have the kids. I don't want my grandma going anywhere. This is her home. She took me in when I was a kid. She was there for me. I have no problem being here for her. I still have some income from other work. I have no debt. I may not have a 401k or something, but I do have a good bit of money saved up. Everyone else seems to think there's a problem. But my only problem is nosy neighbors and my other family members prying into my life. Now, when my mom has someone else call me or my grandma, I tell them to shut the flip up and mind their own dang business. Some of these people have complained to my mom and stepdad that I was rude to them, but I really don't think I'm the one being the a-hole. My therapist says there is never a reason to be rude. I'm getting close to telling her to shut the front door. Ooh, this one might be a little bit tougher decision. Let's uh, check on the community while you guys write it down in the comments about this story. Artfully stupid votes, not the a-hole. How dare you tell someone who is harassing you to shut up. Unacceptable. For real, if you're taking college classes and have enough savings to make it through COVID, I don't see a problem. If you were just chilling and bumming out, that would be different. Get that degree, get a good job, and support your grandma. Salt 610, the OP, comes back with, Sometimes I think they are jealous that I never had a real job, and yet I have savings. They can't manage their money at all. PyZombie 3 said, Side note, you can't will your kids to someone. They certainly take your wishes into consideration, but it's not a black and white like that. If something does happen to them, just make sure your ducks are in a row and talk to whoever they willed them to. It might be that simple. Or it might involve some lawyers. You got this. VR612, yup. If OP's mom and stepdad die and OP and grandma are the closest next of kin, both geographically and family tree-wise, they will be getting a call from a social worker. Those kids are not going to go into foster care when family is ready and willing to take them in. Pancake Go Boom wanted to add, not to mention if a social worker does come knocking, OP just has to explain, yeah, my parents didn't want me to have the kids because I dared move in with my grandma who just lost her husband and was isolated due to COVID. I wasn't about to abandon her like everyone else. But my parents said I was a mooch, even though I've got savings for emergencies like this and use the time wisely to take online courses. The social worker will be like, well, dang, all right. Sounds like you're a pretty reasonable and caring person. Ditch Digger Girl also thought, especially since the closest kin are an adult sibling and a grandmother, living together financially stable with a house, no space concerns, no money concerns, 
all the time in the world to nurture and supervise, loving and willing and able to take care of the children and eager to do so. If the parents disappeared tomorrow, this would be the best emergency placement situation the social worker sees this month, maybe this year. And we rounded out with Do You Wanna Be's comment? Adult sibling who can keep all the kids together. It's a huge thing. My dad died when I was 20 and my little siblings were 5 and 11. I got worried about my family's future and what would happen to the kids if something happened to our mom. Spoke to a family lawyer and was told that as long as I had a home for the kids and a way to provide support, aka take care of them, I would automatically be granted custody. My grandparents, aunts, and uncles could try to contest it, but it would be a difficult legal battle for them to do so, especially since I had the support from all grandparents in my entire paternal family. Same thing would happen even now if something happened to my mom. I would automatically get custody of my brother, being the oldest sibling, and that would go a long way towards granting me custody of my two very young half-siblings, since I would be able to keep the sibling unit of the three of them together. Courts and social workers look at who is most closely related to the kids and would be able to provide the most stable home life. They don't look at what a parent wills as anything other than a suggestion. Well, that's a wrap, everybody. Thanks for contributing down in the comments, and we'll be checking in to see what you had to say. Cheers. Thanks for tuning in to the Sire. If you enjoyed today's content, smash that like button. Subscribe for more unique insights. Catch you in the next one.